Hello, and today we're going to be going over some tips and tricks of the basic uses of the TI-30XS Multi-View Scientific Calculator. This is a calculator that you can use on your Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2 EOIs, and you can also use it on your ACTs and SATs. I really like this calculator because I find it to be very user-friendly. Um, so basically, to turn it on, you're just going to press the on button, and then you can see above the word on button in green is the off button. To use any of the functions that are in green above the buttons, you're going to use the second button. So it's kind of like a shift. And so I press second, and then I press the on button, and that actually turns it off because there's the off button on top of the word on. As I turn it back on, and then I am, if you ever need to clear the calculator completely for a standardized test, you're going to do that by pressing second and then the zero button because on top of the zero button there it says reset in green. And then when it says reset, you can either scroll down with the arrow button to yes and press enter, or you can press the number two since it's the second option. And then you will get the message memory cleared. Then the other thing is um, if you have problems that you've done before, so I'll just do it for you. If you, you can use these arrow buttons to scroll back up. And if you highlight a problem in the black, like I have 8 plus 8 highlighted here, and I press enter, it will bring that back down. So if I needed to add some more numbers to that, I can do that without having to type the whole thing over again. Or if there was a simple mistake, I can scroll over and just type over it and press enter that way also. So the first button I want to go over is our pi button. And what an example of a problem you could use there is to find the area of a circle with a radius of r equals 4. So if we're finding the radius of r equals 4, we're going to have to know that the formula for the area of a circle is pi times r squared. So I can just use my pi button to calculate that. So I can take pi times the radius squared. My radius here is 4, and here's my square button. And there it is. And so then I just press enter, and I notice that my answer is put in terms of pi for me already. The, the area of that circle is 16 pi units squared, which would be the answer to part A here. Now let's say you need to approximate your answer. So you need your answer in decimal form. That's when you're going to have to go into mode. And currently I have math print highlighted in mode. That means that it's going to give me answers that are exact. If I need it to be an approximate answer, I'm going to have to go down and highlight classic and press enter. And then to get back to my home screen, I'm going to press second and then mode because that says quit above mode. And then I'm going to have to do it over again, or I, and that's going to be the pi button times 4 squared, enter, and that time it gives me the decimal form. Most of the time, however, it is advantageous to have it in the math print mode. So I'm going to go back, highlight math print, and press enter so that it, it is, continues to be in that. Another thing is, is this calculator isn't smart enough to know the difference between a negative and a minus. So you need to use the negative button when you need a negative and a minus button when you mean subtraction. So here I would have 8 and then subtraction is this minus sign over here between the times and the plus. I press minus there and then parentheses and then I have a negative 4 in the parentheses. So I need to go down here and press negative 4 and parentheses and press enter. Now, if I had pressed the wrong button, it would give me an error. So if I had done minus and then minus again, it's going to say syntax error. And then I'm going to press enter or clear, and it's going to go back and highlight right over that minus symbol that should be a negative symbol. So I can just press negative, and now it gives me the correct answer. So that's a very common mistake that is made with this calculator. Now one of my favorite features of this calculator is the fraction button. Um, the fraction button is 
right here it says n over d that stands for numerator over denominator so I'm going to press it and you can see a fraction pops up for me to fill in so if I need to reduce a fraction all I am going to do is type 35 in the top of that fraction and then scroll down and type 49 and press enter and it reduces that fraction in number three here to five sevenths for me and if it's a mixed number that you need to reduce then you can see above the fraction button is a example of a mixed number I'm just gonna press second and then the fraction button and that time it gives me a blank mixed number to fill in and then I'll just type a three use my arrows to scroll over to the right four my down arrow to fill in the bottom and then I press enter and it reduces that fraction for me and you can also use these fractions buttons to just add or subtract or multiply or divide do any operations with fractions so number four here asks me to add fractions so I'm gonna press my fraction button fill in the one scroll down to the eight and then scroll over and then I'm gonna to have to press plus if you don't scroll over you're gonna put the plus in the denominator so I'll show you how you do it wrong if I didn't scroll over to get out of the fraction and just press the plus you can see that it would just continue the problem in the denominator which is not what I want so I'm gonna press delete and then I'm gonna scroll over and put plus and then the new fraction button is 2 over 5 and press enter and there's my answer 21 over 40 Next, I'm going to look at how to convert between a decimal and a fraction. So if you have a fraction number 9 over 16 and I want to turn that into a decimal like a number 5, I'm going to go ahead and type in my fraction. So fraction button and then the 9 on top, down arrow to 16. And then I'm going to scroll over to the right arrow so that I'm out of that fraction. And then I can see above the word table in green, is F and D with arrows between it. That stands for converting between a fraction and a decimal, either way. So I'm going to press second, and then that brings up convert to a fraction or decimal, and I press enter, and there is the decimal equivalent, 5,625 thousandths. And then if it's the other way, if you need to convert a decimal to a fraction, I'm just going to go ahead and type that decimal in and do the same thing. Same button, I'm going to press second table to bring up that green fraction to decimal conversion. And then I press enter and it gives me the answer as a fraction, 13 over 50 already reduced for me. Now, the answers are always going to be an improper fraction. So if you need to convert between a mixed number and an improper fraction, that's when you're going to be using this part right here in the green, where you have the conversion, that's what the arrows between it mean, between a f improper fraction and a mixed number. So it's above that times 10 to the n power. And so what that looks like, I want to simplify 14 over 4, so I put that in, 14 over 4, I'm going to make that a mixed number, and you can see when I type it in, it still leaves it as an improper fraction. So that's when I can just go ahead and do second, and then press the conversion button right here, and it brings down my answer already for me, and I press enter, and it turns it into a mixed number for me, 3 and a half, and also goes the other way. So number eight here wants me to convert it to an improper fraction. So I'm going to go ahead and type in that mixed number. So I'm going to have to press second fraction button to bring up the empty mixed number. And then I fill in the two and then I right arrow over to get me to the top, put a five, down arrow to get to the bottom of the fraction. And then I'm going to right arrow over to get out of the fraction and press second and then the conversion to the mixed number or improper and I press enter and it writes it down for me as an improper fraction. Next I'm going to look at how to use the percent button so that you can do problems that involve percents. So if you want to know what is 82 percent of 602, remember that of means to multiply, so that means I'm going to multiply 82 percent times 602. Beforehand you would have to convert this to a decimal and then have to multiply it which you can still do and those are great skills to know but if you want to check yourself you can use the percent button that is above the left parenthesis so you see it's in green so that means I'm gonna to have to use my shift button to use it 
So I'm going to press 82 and then my second button percent and you can see now it says 82 percent times 602 and then I press enter and there is my answer. 82 percent of 602 is 493 and 64 hundredths. And you can also use use the calculator to convert decimals and fractions to percents. So you can see above the right parenthesis is an arrow and a percent to convert though any number into a percent number. So to use it, I'm going to first convert this decimal of 52 hundredths in number 10. So I'm going to just go ahead and type 0.52 into the calculator. And then because it's in green, I use my second button and then convert to percent. And you can see it brings up the arrow and the percent symbol. And I press enter and it converts it to 52%. So that decimal, 52 hundredths, is the same as 52%. And I can do the same thing with a fraction. So in number 11, I'm given the fraction 4 over 5, so I enter that into my fraction button. And I scroll over to make sure I'm out of the fraction. And then I do the same thing. Second, convert to percent, press enter, and that fraction is the same as 80%. Then the last thing I want to go over is how to use the power and root buttons on the calculator. So you can see if you want to square a number, you have this x squared, that's your square, how you can square a number. But if you want to do any power greater than 2, you're going to have to use what's called the caret button, and that's my up arrow symbol here. So in number 12, it asks us to do 82 cubed. So I would just type 82, and then my caret symbol, which makes it go up into an exponent. And then I type a 3, and then I'm going to use the arrow. Then I press enter, and that gives me the answer to 82 cubed. And then number 13, it's the same idea. I'm going to have 5, and then my caret button to go up to an exponent. And then I press 9, and then I right arrow out of the exponent. And then I press enter, and there's 5 to the ninth power. Then the last two questions, 14 and 15, deal with square roots and cube roots. So the square root button is going to be above our square button. So it's right there in the green. And so when we're going to do square roots, we're going to press second square root. And then you can see it pops the square root with you able to type whatever you need to underneath of it. So I'm going to type 98. And then I'm going to press enter. And it sees that it reduces it for me into 7 in square roots of 2. Now, if you needed that to be a decimal number, that's when you would go into mode, scroll down and highlight classic, and press enter, then press second quit, like I showed you in the beginning, and then you'd have to type it in again. So here, it types it a little bit differently when it's in classic than math print, but you still press the square root button, and then you type in 98, and then you need to end the parenthesis. And then you press enter, and it'll give you the decimal form. So like I said, I like to have it in math print, so I'm going to go back into mode and highlight math print and press enter, and then second quit. And then I'm going to do number 15, which is the fourth root of 81. So to do the fourth root, I'm going to use this button here above the caret that has the X and then the root symbol. And so that's saying you can do any root with this problem. So since I'm doing the fourth root, I'm going to type in 4 first. You always type in whatever the little number, which is called the index, in first. And then I'm going to press second and the root button. And you can see it makes it that little 4 now, just like it shows in the problem in 15. And then I'm going to type 81. And then I'm going to right arrow out of it. And then I'm going to press enter. And the fourth root of 81 is 3. And so that's going to be your answer to 15. So thank you for joining us today, and I hope you can use your calculator just a little bit better now.